So we're in like week three or four of lockdown, I lose track. It's been a while and I've begun to worry that unless I take appropriate steps, I might never leave the house again. And I just wanted to sort of explore this thought a little bit because I don't think I'll be the only one who's worrying about this. Now, the point of view I'm coming at this from is the point of view of someone who has had periods in the past where I've essentially had my own little lockdown when I have not been able to leave the house for weeks, sometimes months on end due to my mental health. And I found in those times it became harder and harder and harder to leave the house and that the more that I didn't do it, the harder it would become. So often the very hardest thing I ever did in any day was to take that very first step outside of the house. So for me, a really important thing has been having a dog because it meant every morning I had to get up, get out, walk the dog, sometimes talk to people while walking the dog, and I'd have done the hardest thing in my day already. When I didn't do that, when I didn't get out, didn't walk the dog, didn't leave the house, didn't connect with people, I became more and more fearful of the world at large and anxiety would overwhelm me and it just became harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. And I did find that there were other ways that I could connect online and that was okay, but I generally found my world would shrink more and more and more and become smaller and smaller and smaller and that would be hard. Now, fast forward to 2020, it is the coronavirus pandemic, and having put really good measures in place to promote my well-being, to stay well, to make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen to me, that my world doesn't shrink and I do leave the house, I'm now in a situation where this enforced lockdown, isolation, means that there's no reason to leave the house and we're being actively discouraged from doing so. And I'm very good at not leaving the house, far too good but I fear that it may do me harm in the longer term and I can be setting myself up for a tricky time mentally. So I've been thinking carefully about this and how to make sure that essentially the lockdown doesn't trigger a kind of relapse of my sort of social isolation and anxiety. I'm actually in a pretty good place with my mental health at the moment, which is fantastic, but this is an active process for me all the time. I have to work really hard at my self-care, at looking after myself, of making sure that mental illness does not take grip again. It's a really active process for me all the time. And so I'm always very mindful of the things that might trigger or challenge that status quo. And they might lead me down paths of self-destruction or illness. So essentially lockdown is a risk for me. So there are a few things that I'm doing and I thought it was worth sharing partly because I find when I do this and I share stuff with you guys that it holds me to account and it means I'm better at actually following through and doing those things. And partly because I know that I am so far from alone in these issues that I thought it might be helpful for some of you as well. So what am I doing? How am I trying to prevent lockdown from triggering self-isolation and mental illness and huge anxiety for me? First of all, I'm making a commitment to myself that as part of my daily routine, I'm gonna get outside every single day, that I leave my house, I leave the boundaries of the perimeter of my house. I appreciate that in some places in the world right now, you can't do this. Here in the UK, at the time of filming, you are allowed to leave your house once each day for exercise, or to go out for essential items, like to go to the supermarket or the pharmacy or something. I can't go anywhere because we live with a vulnerable adult. My mother-in-law is older and asthmatic, so we can't come into contact with other people. So I can't be going to the shops, I can't go out and do these purposeful things, but I can leave my house to exercise on my own as long as I keep my distance from other people. So I'm making sure I do that every single day. In fact, I'm really fortunate because I have a very good task that I'm doing each day which helps me to get out of the house, which is that I go to the vicarage just down the road from my house, a couple of minutes walk away, and I am working with our vicar at a distance to record his prayers each day so that I can make those available to our wider community from the church. And people are finding that really valuable. So I go, I meet the vicar, I walk his dog while he's recording his prayers in the park, um, and then I come home again. And having this as part of my daily routine is proving absolutely invaluable. 
If for any reason we stop doing that recording and I don't have that reason to go out each day, then I will try to ensure that I do still leave the house every day. For me, having a routine and a rhythm about that is really helpful. So at the moment I know now that half past five every day is the point at which I will leave the house for a little while. When you do things every day in a routine, in a rhythm, it's much more easy to do them. They become habit forming and just like any habit, good or bad, the more that you do it, the more likely you are to do it. So I've formed the habit of leaving the house every day. Secondly, I've been thinking really carefully about how to ensure that I can connect with people in a meaningful way. So one of the things that happens to me when I kind of isolate and withdraw and become very anxious is that I lose my connection with other people. And whilst as someone who is autistic, kind of building and maintaining those social relationships and connections is actually very hard work for me and can induce quite a lot of stress. My life is so much better for going through that hard work and inducing that stress and having those connections. I really value the people in my life and the things that they bring. And it makes me feel good to be connected. It gives me a sense of purpose and often fun as well. So those connections really matter, but it's really easy for them just to all kind of fall away during this time. And I can appear very connected by kind of broadcasting on social media and having a little bit of interaction there, but it's not the same as actually talking to people, having real conversations. Now, it's not possible to do that face to face right now at all. There's a certain extent to which it can be done with video technology, although like many people, and I think in particular autistic people, I use that technology, I engage with it, but I find it remarkably draining to have two way conversations going on via video. This I can do, I can talk to you, I can talk to you endlessly when it's just me talking at the camera, but if you're talking back to me, then suddenly this becomes very, very complicated, even more complicated than if we're talking face to face. So I find video call hard. The phone, I've always traditionally hated um, and have avoided at all costs, but I am learning to engage with the phone. And people have been quite surprised. There've been a few people who I've called and, and they've kind of assumed there would be a purpose to my call because if I pick up the phone, there will be a reason. I will have a purpose in mind. And once I've achieved that purpose, I'm done here. But at the moment, I'm trying really hard every day to, to pick up the phone to a friend or a colleague, someone who I would like to connect with and just to have a chat. And it's quite a hard work, actually. I'm not good at sort of small talk and there's not loads to talk about right now, but I am finding that doing that, doing it each day, A, it is proving something which is nice and rewarding for me personally and a good thing to do because some of the people I'm picking up the phone to are genuinely happy to hear the sound of another voice. So there are a few people I've spoken to who are living alone and I might be the only person they've spoken to that day and that feels good and a nice thing to do. Um, but, but B, I'm finding that the more that I do it, that I kind of am practicing, I guess, I'm making myself practice something I find harder and I'm getting a little bit better at it. I'm getting more comfortable at the fact that these conversations don't have to have structure. Um, and yeah, it's, I, I often feel tired, but good after I've had those discussions. So um, yeah, so I'm making sure I do that again, trying to do that every day. And I'm actually keeping like an ongoing list of people who I'm going to call so that I don't have to think about it at the time. I just go to the next person on the list. And sometimes I might note a few things that I want to talk to them about or things that I'd like to say to them or things I think they'd find interesting because that gives me a little bit of framework for my discussion rather than it being entirely loose, which really scares me. And I fully get how weird this probably sounds to lots of you because many of you just could pick up the phone to a friend and that'd be the most natural thing in the world. For me it's it's just not, um, but I'm, I'm learning. Other things that I'm doing to help me prevent kind of isolation really setting in and becoming very withdrawn um, is to keep reminding myself that this situation is temporary and reminding myself that I mustn't lose the skills that I've spent so long learning of being around people, of engaging with people, of interacting with the world. I have to keep telling myself, I'll need those skills again. This is really important and giving myself the motivation to try 
and keep connecting with people to engage with things, to do things in a way that means that when lockdown does end, when the world returns to some kind of normality, um, that I will have all of the, the skills and the impetus and the motivation I need to engage with the world again in a meaningful way. And that's an important reminder to me because at the moment it can feel like this is going to go on forever. And I have had to be accepting of the fact that it may go on for some time, but understanding that this shall pass, this shall end, has been an important thing for me to keep reminding myself. And on a similar note to that, I've been actively making plans for the future as well. So I can't put dates and times on those plans at the moment, but having very clear things in my diary saying, when this is over, I would like to meet you, I would like to do this, I would like to go here, I would like to do this thing. Um, has been important for me, having those things in the future, because they're very clear reasons for me to keep these skills up. Because if I feel completely unable to leave the house, completely unable to be around other people, then I'm not going to be able to do those things that I'm planning for. Some of those things that I'm planning for are work things, and I've got lots of ideas, for example, about people that I want to meet up with so that I can create some great video content with them for the online platform that I'm developing. And that's a good motivator. Some of them, it's a friend thing. And these are people who I would just love to go and have coffee with and have a chat with and a hug with and catch up with. And again, knowing that I have a commitment to myself that when this is over, I'm gonna put in the diary a time to go and be with this person is something that I can look forward to and gives me a reason to try and keep myself going and keep these skills up. As I kind of go through this video, it does make me appreciate how odd a lot of this might sound and I know that there are some of you who watch who experience the same issues and might really get it but there are lots of you for whom you're probably wondering why this seems so hard um, and I think it's actually that the kind of current situation has just made me really focus in on where my strong strengths and challenges lie and that for me one of the big challenges that I always face day to day is of actually getting out into the world of being with people of connecting with people of managing socially it's something that is really hard it takes a huge amount of energy from me and even though often I appear um, very extrovert and bubbly and like I'm really managing well, um, what you often don't see is all the stuff that goes on behind the scenes in order for me to be able to present in that way. Um, and there is a certain extent to which the more that we all move into online lives right now during this period of lockdown, the more that I think Maybe I don't need to go out anymore. I've got lots of events in my diary where I'm meant to have been speaking at big events and those events are largely being moved on like six or 12 months or maybe just indefinitely postponed. And I keep having this thought of, do they ever really need to happen? Maybe I just don't go out anymore. Maybe I just stay home. And I have to keep on catching that thought and saying, no, actually, no, you do need to still go and do these things because your life is better for doing them. And actually, I hope other people's lives are a little bit better for me doing those things too. So yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot on my mind about it right now. And as you can tell, my thoughts aren't completely coherent on it, but basically I have a bit of an action plan for making sure that lockdown doesn't mean I never leave the house again. And much as it might sound like I'm saying that in jest, it's a genuine, genuine concern but I'm working on it. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this too. Are you someone who has similar concerns and what steps are you taking to try and minimize the impact that lockdown has on your ability to engage with other people socially? Please do leave a comment because I feel a little bit alone in this and I'm really sure that I'm not. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, I hope everyone is keeping safe and well and that things are going okay for you and your families. 
If there are topics you would like me to talk about in future videos uh, for my channel, then please do leave them in a comment down below. I'm very actively seeking ideas for what content would be useful right now, whether it's directly related to the current situation um, or broader, then do let me know. I'm spending a lot of time filming right now because I've been creating this online video platform of on-demand content for teachers and so I'm doing loads and loads and loads of filming um, and it's quite nice for me to maybe film something a little bit different for my own channel occasionally. So I will try and continue with my Tuesday and Friday videos but occasionally you'll find that I will share something that I've created for the other platform because I might think you're gonna like it but also I sometimes run out of steam a bit. The amount of time I spent talking to a camera, editing myself, hearing myself is off, yeah through the roof right now. <laughs> Stay safe, keep well, keep in touch and connect in the comments. Take care, bye.